Welcome back to the channel, Coach. I hope you're well. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest content. At this point, we've pretty much got content going out every 48 hours, so stay up to date by hitting the subscribe button. And if you want to reach out to me with any business questions or you want to learn more about our sports accelerator program, visit the description below this video. All the links are there and ways you can reach out to me. So today I want to talk about seven ways to attract the best trainers in your city to work for you. Now, very recently, I spoke with a very successful trainer out in the United States who has his own indoor facility. He's seeing about two to 300 clients per week that come through the doors of his indoor facility. <laughs> but a huge problem that he is having is coach retention. So keeping trainers and coaches in his program for long. So I thought it'd be a good way to come on here and create content, <clears throat> create a short video, because I know this is something a lot of coaches struggle with, right? Now, one of the biggest reasons why a lot of coaches struggle with this is because a lot of their assistant coaches are kind of are doing their own thing on the side as well as working for them. So what tends to happen is that if you're doing your own thing on the side, you're not going to be fully committed to that company. Okay, So hopefully these seven things help you. I want you to go out, implement them. And again, <clears throat> with our company, we've been helping coaches to do this since 2016. So if you need more help, visit the description below. Let's uh, let's connect. Right, the first one is network in your community. Now, when trainers have a coaching business and they get to a point where they can't take on any more clients because they're, they're fully booked. So the alternative is now, how can I bring on an assistant coach to now share the workload? Uh, a lot of coaches tend to get very desperate. So they get desperate and they just want to bring someone in quickly to do that. Now, that's fantastic. But the, the problem with it is if you hurry or rush the process, <clears throat> normally the coaches or trainers that you bring in are going to be a bad fit for your company. And <clears throat> this is why, because most coaches don't have a solid process in place to recruit coaches most of them what they do is they'll put an ad out there the coach will apply they'll get on a, an interview he sound the coach sounds great they bring them in and that's it and there's no kind of follow-up process with them and what tends to happen is that coach might not he might have had a really good interview but then during the process or during the being with you right he starts to show up late. He starts to not plan his sessions. He just goes with the flow. Uh, your customers start to complain about him for whatever reason. Okay, And it starts to give your company a very bad name and a bad image. So networking in your local community, seeing what other trainers are doing. And something that I've done with, with a coach that I've worked with is we've helped him recruit coaches through basically going onto Instagram and that coach having a look at what other trainers are in their area. And what that coach does is you're kind of researching what other people are doing, but seeing the quality of them. So the process would be very simple. You'd go onto Instagram, have a look at what other trainers, who who other trainers are in your local area, see what they're doing, do some research on them and go and attend the session, see how they coach. And then you can then take the next step to reach out to them, to offer them to work for you on either a full-time or a part-time basis. Now, this process does work if you do your research. 
So researching how many clients that that coach is working with, do they have some time available? Um, how do they coach? What are their processes? Um, maybe meeting up with them just over a coffee and getting to know them before you offer them an opportunity for them to join you. Right. So that's what networking is. And a lot of the time, this process is very long and business owners don't bother to actually do these steps. But if you do these steps and you attract the right people, then your, your business will expand. Okay. Now, a lot of coaches might be thinking, right, well, if he's doing his own thing, why does he want to come and work with me? Well, that's another question to be answered and that is where you have to be creative in the way you approach okay because the chances are if you attract someone that's already doing their own thing right they've already been there and done that they know what it's like to run a business they know the how much effort energy it takes they know the the client process Right. And if you can attract someone like that to work for you and help you grow your business, okay, if you're very creative on the offer you give them, right, you can attract people to, to work for you and, or even partner with them. Okay. But just networking in your local community, seeing who's there will, will help you. All right. Next one is having a solid coach development program. So once you've brought on the right person, Okay. A lot of coaches, what they do, a lot of trainers that, that have businesses, they don't continue to develop their staff. So they'll bring them in and because they've got some experience coaching, they'll let them go run the sessions and, and that's it. Now, humans in general, we want to get better and we want to progress. Progress is what stems us, it's what motivates us. So if you have a solid coaching program where it could be once a month, it could be once every two weeks, you're helping that coach to develop either on the field, off the field, doing a online seminar with them or doing a webinar or getting on, getting them onto Zoom, having calls, right? That is going to help them to stay ahead of the game and to feel, shall we say, loved by your company, right? Because at the end of the day, most, most employees, what they want to do, they want to feel as though you care about them, okay? Now, a lot of coaches don't take the time to do this because it's like, right, well, they should be doing a job. I'm doing a favor for them by giving them a job, right? That works, but... If you want to build something special long term, right, it's the same way you do with what you do with clients. If you have clients coming in, you want them to stay with you for a long time. And it's the same with coaches, right? You don't want to keep having a turnover of coaches. You want coaches to be with you for the long term so then you can grow the business and not worry about consistently bringing in a new staff. Okay, so having a solid coaching program uh, will definitely help them to, to stay committed to you, but also feel as though you care about their development. Now, the third one, allow for progression within the company. So this is a good one. And it's one, again, it kind of comes down to coach development program, but allowing them to progress, not just in terms of their coaching, but financially as well. So by, and, and the way you can do this is by giving them more responsibility. So if you bring on an assistant coach to help you with the sessions, okay, the next progression, and once they've earned it, might be now they become head coach. So you give them the responsibility of now leading the, your coaching or training program. Okay, You're still the director. You're still the, the person managing it. But now they're head of coaching of the coaching, right? So the coaching curriculum, the coaching sessions, how what players learn, how players develop within your program. Okay, you can give them that 
authority to build a really good coaching program. And, you know, you, you can work alongside them. At the end of the day, it's your business. So you obviously want it built the way you want it, but you're allowing them to progress and have more input into what you're doing. Okay. The fourth one, make them feel part of the business. And this is a very simple one. So doing, um, you know, it could be weekly meetings. It could be weekly phone catch up calls, right? Just making them feel as though they're part of what this is. Okay. A lot of trainers don't do that with their staff. Uh, they don't make them feel part of the business. Uh, but, you know, sometimes there's certain things you don't want to share with staff, which I understand. And I feel that that's correct. But if you make them feel part of the business, if you make them feel part of the journey, then again, it comes down to keeping them long term. Same way you want to keep your clients and you don't want to continuously have a turnover of clients. You've got to do the same with coaches. And yes, it's a lot of energy. Yes, it's a lot of effort. But again, if you want to build a really good business, then that is the way to do it. And to make them feel part of it is just have weekly or monthly meetings where you bring everyone together. You maybe go out for lunch and, you know, you discuss the progression of the business. This is where we were last month. This is how we've grown. Okay. And this is where we want to get to next month having you guys on board with what we're doing. And these are the plans going forward for the future, right? So make them feel part of the journey uh, with your business. Now, the next one, share profit with them, okay? Now, I don't want you guys to get confused with this, right? It's, okay, there is a, a way to do this, right? And, and the best way to do it is you could set up a referral program with coaches where if they bring in, bring in any family into... The business right and that family joins your program then they get a percentage of the profit made from that transaction so give you a, a an example right if a, a customer of yours pays a hundred dollars a month for training now a coach has bought them into your 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 company because maybe they're they're a friend of the family or there's someone that has inquired about the company, right? You could set up a referral program with them where you send that coach a link. That coach then sends that parent a link. And if that parent subscribes or, or registers through that link, that coach might get 10% of the, of the sign-up fee, right? It could be 10%, it could be 15%, it could be 50%, depending on what you want to do, okay? Okay. Now, some coaches might find this risky because you, you know, they, they feel that they're losing money. But at the end of the day, you know, if you want to keep staff, staff need to feel that they have, they can progress within the company and that they can make more money with you, right? Because if they can make more money with you, they don't need to then go and start their own thing. So that is one very simple way of doing it. Anyone that they bring in, you give them a commission for bringing that person in, okay? And that just, you know, if they bring in 10, 10, 10 families in one month, that's an extra, an extra bit of money that they have on top of what you're already paying them, okay? Some coaches like that model. Some coaches prefer not to, but I feel that it does work if you have a really good system in place. And if you have a coach that you want to keep, that is good, does a really good job for you. That's a great way of keeping them in with what you're doing. Uh, next one, work uh, host workshops and events. Uh, so kind of goes back to uh, making them feel part of the business, but hosting workshops. So staying up to date with the industry trends and having workshops on those trends. So if there's a latest type of training that is currently now, out there, then having a workshop that focuses on that type of training could be a good way for them to stay up to date with the industry. Uh, also hosting events. Uh, a good one I like is doing staff events, but away from the sport. So this could be going bowling. It could be just going to, for, for a meal at a restaurant or going out for drinks. Um, 
a family and co colleague uh, event is a nice one. You could do a like a like a party, shall we say, where you know your staff can bring in their their their, their families, their girlfriends, boyfriends, and you just have a meal together. All right, uh, that's a good one. I feel that that's a, a way of them feeling part of what you do. And what a lot of coaches do is they do that, but like at the end of the year. But, you know, I, I personally don't like that because throughout the year, they're working hard for you and you've got to make sure that they feel part of that. So doing workshops, doing events, making them feel part of, of the journey and having their families be part of it as well is a good way to continuously keep them engaged in what you do. Uh, the next one and the last one is fund or part fund latest courses or coaching licenses. Now, if they've been very loyal to you and they've stuck stuck with you, they've brought you business, you know, they've improved the business, then I feel that it's it's a good way for you to either fund all of the next coaching license license up, whichever they have, or part fund it. A lot of coaches go down the part fund one, so they'll put in 50%. The other coach puts in the 50%. Um, and that's just a way for them to keep developing with you as a coach. Uh, but you can have, there's, there's a number of ways you can do this to where you set it up where you do help them, but there is a condition on that. But... If you want to learn more how to do that, then then reach out to me. Uh, we have helped coaches coaches to do that. Okay, right. Thank you for watching. And again, if you have any more questions for me or you want to learn more about our Sports Accelerator program, then reach out to me. Description below, number of ways you can do that. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.